morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is winning in the word. We are feeding our faith and we are starving our doubt to death. Uh, today is Relationship Wednesday. Relationship Wednesday, man, I'm so excited. Uh, it's our first Relationship Wednesday of the new year. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. First time I'm with you on this particular broadcast. Uh, and today I want to kind of go back to something we've been talking about, which are friendships, um, understanding relationship, understanding friendship, um, understanding that in the kingdom of God and where we come from and how we're operating, um, friendships and relationships are a covenant word, a covenant word. It means something to God. The people that we associate with, the people that we hang out with, the people that we're um, connected to. It means something. It's so funny. I was talking to my, I called my spiritual uncle, Dr. Layton, the other day, and he actually was, was teaching on a lot of the same stuff we had been talking about with this church, which was the importance of your relationships in 2022, who you allow into your circle, who you allow into your life, who you allow to have influence in your life. Amen. So let's pray. Uh, and then we'll do some shout outs and we'll get into the word. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for winning in the word Wednesday. I thank you for a relationship Wednesday. I thank you, Father, for the relationships that God is going to, the new relationships God is going to bring our way in 2022. Uh, some of the, the relationships that we currently have being, you know, redefined or God uh, bringing clarity to those relationships on how they will benefit us and how we can benefit them and how we can grow together. Father, I thank you. And Lord, also the Lord just making uh, uh, it known to us, maybe some relationships that we don't need to be as involved in in 2022. I just thank you, Father, for all of those. Uh, and Lord, I thank you for this audience right now. I just thank you, Father, for the favor of God uh, being with them, Lord. Uh, right now, Lord, we lift up uh, just all those that are sick and being afflicted, Lord. There's just so many people going through uh, just just challenges with their health. Lord, we just pray uh, your, your supernatural healing upon their physical bodies. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Let me give some shout outs and then we'll get going. Good morning, Deacon Daryl. Uh, good morning, Cousin Faye. Uh, good morning, Miss Alma. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning, Crystal. Uh, good morning, Nigel. Good morning, Dr. Layton. There's my buddy. Happy birthday. Today is Dr. Layton's birthday. He's 22 years old today and looks every bit of it. Good morning, Dr. Layton. Um, good morning, Ray. Good morning, Candace. Good morning, Harry. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Annie. Uh, Natifa, Amanda, Madeline, Jerry, Giselle, Rita, uh, Amelia, uh, Joan. Good morning, Frank. Praying that foot is healing in a mighty way. Um, Frank Lutz, good morning. Uh, Paula, to you and Chip, good morning. Jennifer, good morning. Michael, good morning. Uh, Debbie, good morning. Brenda Jackson, good morning. Keita, Miss Donzi, uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Listen, I want to get right into this, man. This thing has really been bubbling in my spirit. I'm, like I said, I was talking to Dr. Layton about this. We've been talking about the same subject. And I just want to let you know, you know, one of the things God really has weighed in my heart relative to this new sermon series, um, No More Fear, um, is our friendships, the people that we decide to hang around. You know, we got to understand that that word friend is a covenant word. It's a covenant word. It's more than just an acquaintance. It's more than just somebody, you know, we, we speak to in passing. If we're going to call somebody our friend, we have to realize that, that it means more than, than, than just an acquaintance, right? So we got to be careful because friends have the ability, because you've allowed them, right, into your circle. Friends have the ability to have influence. And they're going to have the amount of influence on you that you allow them. I talked to you all last year. I talked about the three levels of friendships, right? We have friends that are upward. In other words, we look upward, so we have a bending relationship with that friend. What I tell you, where there's not a bending of the knee, there can't be a pouring of the spirit. So if you have a friend that you think uh, God is called to be here, and you think they're a pure relationship, you're never going to receive 
from that relationship what God has called it to be. Now, I'm going to tell you, you don't need to have a bunch of people you're looking up to. I am going to tell you that. You need to really be conscious of that because there, 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 there has to be some qualifications before somebody, you know, you allow somebody to speak into your life. Because you need to know who's speaking into your life and who you're receiving. Um, I'm very, very particular about that circle. You know, I talked to you all a little bit about Dr. Layton. Dr. Layton and I, I have a, we were talking about this the other day. I have an upward relationship with him. Uh, he has been called to speak into my life. I honor the counsel. I honor what God says to him about me and my life. Why? Because my pastor. Um, they were best friends. They were, they were, they were like Jonathan and Caleb. They, they, they did ministry together. They did the work of the Lord together. And my pastor trusted him with all his heart. So that's all I need. See, I don't, I don't need to go pray and tarry and hear from the, I know who Dr. Layton is because of who, because of who he was in my pastor's life and what they say about them. Does that make sense? So when my pastor went home to be with the Lord, um, Dr. Layton's there and, and, and he helps me as well as a mentor, right? Uh, you have people that are peer relationships. I got my mentors that are in the world. Now I will tell you, I don't ever have a, a worldly relationship. That's an upward relationship. My upward relationships are only spiritual. I have worldly relationships that I look up to people. There are people that mentor me in the world, but those are peer relationships because everything that they tell me has to then go be weighed by the spirit of God. I have to, because they're in the world. They're not, it's not a friendship. These are people that are good in the court, in corporate America at what I do that I can learn from. And I have a small group of them as well. And then I have people that look up to me and expect me to pour into them. So you got to understand these relationships uh, and what they mean. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18 and verse 24, in the Passion Translation, it says, some friends don't last so long, but there is one loving friend who is joined to your heart closer than any brother. Now, we can see this in the Bible as covenant between Jonathan and David, right? They had a really, really supernatural bond, right? Their relationship showed sacrificial love, right? Their relationship um, um, demonstrated encouragement, right? I mean, they, they had a very, very close relationship. And what I want to say to you today is you need to be very mindful of the people that you're going to allow into your life that's going to have that kind of a relationship with you in 2022. You know, I said a lot of things about going through and, and, and really reevaluating our goals in 2022 to make sure that we're on the path that God wants us on. You know, Dr. Layton said something last night on his broadcast. If you walk with the great, you will become the great. Let me say that again. If you walk with the great, you will become the great. Those that are closest to you will determine the outcomes of your life. Those that you allow to be closest to you will determine the outcomes in your life. So we see it's very, very important who you decide to allow to be in your circle. Now, again, this is a year of no more fear. This is a year of operating in faith. So I'm not telling you to get rid of friends because um, you're afraid of what they may do. These are wise decisions that we're making. We have to learn to grow up and be adults. Adults make wise, calculated decisions. They don't make emotional, knee-jerk decisions. Let me tell you the difference. So you know when you're growing up in the things of God and when you're still a babe in the things of God. Adults make wise, calculated, and if you're a Christian, spirit-led decisions. Immature people make emotional knee-jerk decisions based upon what their flesh wants. So there's a big difference. And I'm going to tell you, if you hang around people that are very emotionally driven, always making decisions upon emotions, guess what? You're going to become like that. Another thing Dr. Layton said last night that I loved, relationships are like buttons on an elevator. 
Some take you up and some take you down. Let me say that again. Relationships are like buttons on an elevator. Some take you up and some take you down. You know what I find out most about people and friends is people typically will choose to be around friends that are just, that think like they think, that act like they act. Know that it's okay to have some of those friends, but those friends aren't going to get you far in life. They're not going to get you far in life because there are some total of what you are. You need to be around and surround yourself with people that aren't like you, but you want to be like. Like Dr. Layton said, if you hang around the great, you'll become the great. If you hang around the great, you'll become the great. In the Passion Translation, in Proverbs chapter 11, in verse 14, in the Passion Translation, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, it says, people lose their way without wise leadership. People lose their way without wise leadership. But a nation succeeds and stands in victory when it has many good counselors to guide it. But a nation succeeds and stands in victory when it has many good counselors to guide it. I want you to think about that for a minute. God is saying to us, people lose their way without wise leadership. Do you realize some of us choose to hang out and choose to be around people that don't even have leadership in their life? Why would you hang around somebody? Why would you be involved with somebody that does not submit to anybody, does not have any type of leadership in their life? Even when you're picking a pastor or you're picking a church, why would you go to a church that has a man of God that the church has no covering? That the church has no covering? It tells you right there, that man obviously thinks he's a he's a king in his own kingdom. Why would you be around people that only talk about themselves? I want to talk about the people that are around me. I want to be around. I, I learn stuff. Y'all just heard me make a statement. Um, there can't be a pouring of the spirit unless there's a bending of the knee. Pastor, Pastor Holmes, Ron Holmes told me that. I didn't know that. I never had heard that before. He said that to me. Man, and, and I, I thought about it. You have to be in a posture to receive. I studied in the word. It made sense. I didn't even have to do any of that when he said it. I, I know it because he's a man of God. He's a man of integrity. He's a man of faith. I go out with him. I see how he treats his wife. I, I understand how much he loves his church. I understand how much he loves God, right? So these are the things. If you get around people and they let their guard down around you, to tell you how they really feel. And then they start saying things that are contrary to who they are at church or who they are at work. You see a whole nother side of them. What's just happened is they just identified you as a person with character flaws because they believe they can let their guard down around you and it's okay. I was counseling somebody the other day, a member of my church, and they, 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 they were sharing something with me that somebody else said, and they used a couple of curse words, and, and I had to stop them. And I had to say to them, listen, when you're speaking to me, don't use that kind of language. Because I'm not going to sit here and allow you to disrespect me and disrespect the anointing on my life. I don't care if you're even saying somebody else said. And the problem there with that relationship is why does that person feel comfortable enough to use those words around me? So that says, I've done something in that relationship. I've allowed a door to be open. I shouldn't have allowed to be open. But believe me, I closed that door firm and hard on that call. Don't ever do that again. Don't ever disrespect me that way again. You allow people to come into your house and disrespect your house. You allow your own children to come into your home and disrespect your home. That, that, that can't happen. You have to set a standard of what, if you won't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. If you allow your buddies that are hanging around you to talk about other women and to have these discussions about how they feel about other women and you're married and they're married, 
they know at that point you're okay with it. And you've just determined in their eyes who you really are. Listen, don't, don't, don't get mad at me. Don't shut it off because that's who you are. You don't like to confront. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you this again. Talked to my leadership about it last night. Confrontation brings about growth. Where there's no confrontation, there can't be no growth. I'm not telling you to be mean to somebody, but you've got to let people know where you stand. You've got to let people know what you will tolerate and what you won't tolerate. Why? Because those people are around you and they're speaking into you. And let me just say this in closing. Don't ever allow anybody into your home that you have not vetted. Don't ever allow anybody into your home that you don't know. And don't ever allow anybody, if you're a born again believer, into your home that does not have light, precious faith. Don't, don't, don't do that. You're inviting the enemy into your home. Pastor, what are you saying? I can't just have friends over. What I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a recipe for victory. Now, you got to understand something. Everybody don't want to have victory. Everybody don't want to win. I want to win. I'm conscious about who I allow into my home. I'm conscious of, around who I allow in my personal circle. And I'm just sharing with you. In 2022, if you want to have good success, you're going to have to make some decisions about the people that you spend the most time with, which are your friends. Make a decision. Well, pastor, but God called me to mentor them. and God called me to love them. Okay. Make sure that you're the one doing the mentoring and you're not the one being mentored. How do you know? The one who's doing the mentoring is the one that's doing the talking. The one that's being the mentor to or who you're mentoring to, they're the ones doing the receiving. So if you're sitting down receiving more than you're giving, you're being influenced. You're not giving influence. So in 2022, because we are focused on eradicating fear out of our life, we're focused on turning the faith up in our life. We're focused on getting rid of the doubt in our life. We're going to have to be careful who we are speaking to. And we're going to be, have to be careful about what we are saying. There's a, a place in the book of Ephesians where it says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. I think Ephesians 4.27. It says, but only that which is good for the edifying and the building up to show grace to somebody else. Those people that you've been called to, just speak life to them. Just speak life to them. Be a blessing to them. But be conscious of your circle and who you're around in 2022. I love you. I love you. I love you. Tonight's service, we're going to continue on the fearless believer, right? The fearless believer. No more fear. Join us tonight, seven o'clock until tomorrow on Prayer Thursday. Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life. Mm -hmm.